Um, so I'm sure many of you have heard of John Deere, you know about big green tractors, but let me explain to you a little bit more about who John Deere is, what we are as a company, because we aren't just big green tractors, we're also small green tractors, we're combines, we're forestry equipment, we're construction equipment, we produce golf carts, turf equipment, and what you might not know is that we're also a financial services provider to help facilitate the purchase of Deere equipment. So we have financial services in 40 different countries around the world, and we're a software developer. We have a really exciting part of our business that writes, I don't know how many millions of lines of code to put together really cool apps and features on our machines that help our operators, whether it's on construction equipment or on agricultural equipment, optimally use those machines. Um, that can include guidance systems, it can include um, various types of uh, you know, feedback to the operator about machine efficiency, uh, there's a whole world of uh, precision agriculture for those of you who aren't Aggies. Precision agriculture involves a machine basically talking to the operator, reading the land, and telling you exactly how to farm your land. Uh, in fact, a couple years ago I heard a statistic that there are as many lines of code in a John Deere machine today as there are in the space shuttle. And that's a couple years ago. So today, I don't know, maybe it's twice as many lines of code. I, I'll have to check with our developers. But nonetheless, we are a tech company as much as we are a manufacturing company and a financial service <coughs> company. So we're also a global company. We sell in almost every country in the world. We have factories and facilities in about a couple dozen or more, actually maybe three or four dozen, three dozen or so. And finally, what drives all of this is uh, something, a little line we use saying that we are committed to those who are linked to the land. Everything we do goes back to serving those people who are linked to developing urbanization, to farming agriculture, to um, maintaining golf courses. It, it, you know, those who link to the land are those who are our customers. And we believe TPP helps us fulfill the commitment we have to those customers. Um, I'll cover two broad ways we think TPP is going to help us fulfill that commitment. The first is what the agreement does specifically for John Deere, and uh, perhaps more importantly is what it does for our customers. So I'll start off with what it does for the corporate entity, for John Deere itself. Uh, the first piece you've heard it mentioned multiple times today is market access. We all know that TPP is going to eliminate tariffs, and yes, it's a 19th century issue, but it is a really important one. Agricultural equipment, construction equipment face some pretty high tariff barriers, especially in the Southeast Asian region. And we are really excited to see that these tariffs are going to zero. Some of them immediately, some of them <coughs> a little bit longer. But I'll give you just a, a couple of examples here. Um, in Malaysia, our construction products currently face uh, tariffs between 5 and 20 percent. Uh, 5 percent sounds low, but for those of you who are out purchasing construction equipment, 5 percent can add up pretty quickly. 20% uh, even more so, a lot of those tariffs go to zero immediately upon entry into force. Some of them take a little bit longer, three to six years. Would we like to see those come down immediately? Absolutely, but we understand that TPP is a was a negotiation. Um, we would have loved to gotten, get, uh, would have loved to have gotten everything we wanted immediately, but um, three to six years is pretty good considering we've been living with these tariffs for decades now. So we are really pleased to see not just on the construction side, but on the agricultural side, how market access really is opening up. And that's important because um, I mentioned we have, we have uh, facilities and factories around the world. Many of them are here in the US. In fact, our largest agricultural and construction equipment facilities are here in the US, and they export between a fourth and a third of all the equipment they manufacture. Um, that's a lot of machines. That's a lot of tariffs that are being assessed on those machines. And we see TPP is really opening up trade in our equipment, as opposed, frankly, to competitors' equipment that are already based in countries that have access to FTAs, where they don't face those tariffs. So moving on from, from tariffs, uh, you've heard a lot of uh, comments already about how TPP is going to, trans to uh, foster a more transparent, fair, clear business environment. There's a number of ways that's going to happen. There are transparency provisions throughout the agreement, including a dedicated transparency and anti-corruption chapter. Uh, you know, when we sit down around a table at John Deere and we talk about, well, what's keeping us from getting this machine across the border? Tariffs are a big deal, but, you know, we'll pay the tariff if we have to. That's in the law. We know what we're up against. We can budget for that. We, we understand how it works. But when there is a lack of transparency, when we don't know what we're up against at the border, 
when there is corruption that you're facing, when somebody is asking you for a payment to get across the border, we don't do that. We will not engage in corrupt behavior. Um, dealing with the non-transparent aspect adds costs far above those what a tariff could. And so we are really pleased with the, uh, the anti-corruption and the transparency procedures um, that have been included in the agreement. We think it's really uh, an important precedent that's been set, and we hope to build upon that in future agreements, um, both here in the U.S. and those that are negotiated globally. Um, I'll specifically apply those points to uh, disciplines on non-discrimination for licensing and certification. Um, there's a lot of non-transparency when it comes to licensing and certification requirements around the world. And the fact that those are specifically called out in the TPP will certainly be a boon to U.S. manufacturers. And frankly, um, like I said, as that, that type of language is applied in other trade agreements around the world, should be should be helpful for everyone. Um, I'm going to move next to a few items that we haven't really seen much of, or haven't really seen at all in prior agreements. One is on remanufactured goods, uh, which is essentially the, uh, it's the ultimate form of recycling. There are now provisions that allow for remanufactured goods to be more easily traded. Um, I won't go into any details, I've already been talked about the state-owned enterprise disciplines are very important in terms of their presidential nature. And finally, the data disciplines. Like I said, we are a software company. The free movement of data is very important to us. I know I'm going over my time, so I'll be very quick. Why is it important to our customers? I will leave the bulk of this to the panel on agriculture that WIDA will be holding, but um, our co agricultural customers will benefit greatly from this agreement, and what's good for our customers is good for us. And uh, <coughs> finally, but certainly not last, uh, not certainly not least, is that our customers demand service. If a part or something on John Deere machine breaks down, in the US, we can usually get them that part within hours maybe sometimes within the day, usually within the day at most, we want to be able to replicate that around the world. And the customs procedures and the trade facilitation that's coming out of TPP will really help us do that and meet the needs of our customers. And that's ultimately um, why we support the agreement. So thank you. Great.